Oh, user. Oh, I've been so hot. Welcome to the Achievement College Podcast, Episode 7. I'm your host, AussieGamer17. You can call me Aussie. And joining me today is my co-host, as always, Fox Plays Official. How are you, Fox? I'm doing well. And here on the Achievement College Podcast, we cover all the natives, latest in the world of achievement and trophy hunting. That's right. Achievements and trophies. We don't discriminate here. They both give us that amazing feeling when we hear that sweet sound. You know what I'm talking about. Oz, do you want to give it a try? I can't do the... I can't do it. Ding! It's hard, isn't it? Yeah, we'll, we'll go over that. We'll, we'll go, go over that. that. We also talk about some of the big video game news from around the world and cover the latest releases and games coming to Xbox Game Pass, games with gold and PS Plus. Coming up on today's show, we're going to talk about our thoughts on the Xbox Games Showcase. I believe that'll be mostly my thoughts because Fox doesn't care. <laughs> watched it okay <laughs> he does care i'm just joking uh we're also going to discuss halo infinite multiplayer going free to play and we want to know will there be a ps5 event in august we're going to talk about all of that and more but before we get to all that guys i want to thank all my amazing patrons over at patreon that make this show possible and all of my youtube videos possible uh please hit the or go to the link down below and join on Patreon if you want to help support the show. Thank you very much. And that is at patreon.com forward slash AussieGamer17. Uh, once again, I did just check the comment section of our last podcast. And our 100% strike rate continues, Fox. No problem at all. Good. Yeah, well, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the day. I want someone to bust us. Yeah, I want someone to go into the comment section on YouTube. Tell, me what, tell us what we got wrong on the show. Put it in the comments and I'll read it out here. Uh, if not, if we get everything right, this segment is going to continue at 100% strike rate. All right, as we always do, we are going to start by talking about what we've been playing. It's probably one of my favorite segments on the show, and I know a lot of viewers like it as well. We're going to talk about what we've been playing lately and how you go about 100%ing uh, it, getting all the achievements or the platinum trophy. Let's start with you, Fox. What are you going to talk about for your first game? All right, so first game I played uh, was uh, Creature in the Well, which uh, Reptile played as we spoke to him. Was it last? It was last week's podcast, wasn't it? Reptile was on. Yeah, no, fortnight yeah. ago. I'm um, saying so I, I wanted to play it because it finally came out on uh, console because it was on PC originally only, um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, didn't take very long. Um, just I really like the art style. That was actually probably the thing that kept me going, honestly. Um, and yeah, just basically, so it's like, so if you guys don't know what it is, if you missed out the last podcast, basically it's a, a oh, it's not isometric, whatever the view, it's like slightly top down, but not quite. Um, but basically you have, um, you play as like a robot that has to go into a well to, I guess, activate some weather machine, some something like that. The story's not that important in that game. Okay. Um, but the main premise of the game is that you use a, a bat and you back whack a ball and then you actually whack the ball against pinball, like pinball bumpers. So it's kind of like they've made a game using pinballs as like the main source of the puzzle and the main source of the combat. It was a really fun game. It was pretty easy as well. So for all the achievement hunters out there, if you just want if you just want the trophies, just go for it. It's very easy. Nothing missable, nothing too hard. Um, and yeah, just just bounce some balls. It wasn't yeah, I can't really say much about it. It was good though. It was what it was not a waste of time, that's what you want to know. Okay, so you said the story is not important. What's the hook to the game? If there is one, um, I guess the yeah, I guess the hook for me, what kept me going was the art style because I'm um, not gonna lie, like I was like, okay, is there gonna be like some cool like plot twist at the end or something? It just felt like a game that was just gonna build up to some exciting climax because when you go into the world, there's like some creature in the world, as the name of the game suggests, that's like kind of harassing you, and you do fight him in every single chapter, and it gets tougher and tougher, but he got pretty easy at the end. Um, so I expected like to see some really cool ending at the end, but. No, not really. So storyline wise, it was it was just a, it was an okay story. I just it just it just felt like a game like it was about to lead to somewhere really cool, but never quite got I, there. Yeah, like 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 don't let that detract you. Still play the game; it's a lot of fun. And um, I really hope they do make a sequel to it or something set in the universe because seems like a seems like the kind of world that you could fit more into it. But who knows? Who knows what they'll do next? Okay, now I don't know if you saw me play. I'm, I'm going to be talking about a game in a minute that I played a, yeah. that has pinball mechanics. I don't know if you've played it or seen much of Yoku's Island Express, but does... Yeah, um, we both played pinball, pinball games. pinball games, does, is it the same concept? Similar. Yoku's Island, when I watched that, that was, that was a pinball machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are sections of Yoku's Island where you're literally in a pinball mach machine. Yeah, yeah. But so creatures in the in the well because I actually haven't played it yet. I'm I'm thinking of getting to it, but is it? Yeah, it took it took like a day. 
for me to do it. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, that was my next question. What kind of hours are we looking at for those that yeah. just want the platinum or the 100%? Now, now, I did get stuck on one of the boss battles and it took me an hour. And I don't know if it's because I was tired or I was just, yeah, not just just having a bad day. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that didn't happen, I probably would have done it like in say, six hours and the predictions are six to eight hours. So yeah, based on that. Sounds about right then. Probably take yeah. me about 15 hours then for uh, if I play that oh. on stream. <laughs> Have some faith in your skills. Have some faith. It's not my skills that I'm worried get back, about. I just get back to Pukira one day. I get distracted very easy and talk to chat and everything takes longer. Sorry, Barry. Um, okay, that's really good. Uh, Let's play Yoku Island. Let's have a pinball off. Okay, okay. Well, we'll move on to my game that I want to talk about. That is Yoku's Island Express that I just beat on stream recently. This game I thought was really, really cool. Um, I was looking through Game Pass. It is another Game Pass game. Surprise, surprise. I'm talking about Game Pass. Um, but yeah, it's another Game Pass game, and I was just looking through, I felt like something really chill, um, something with a cool, chill vibe, So, and I found this, and I thought, oh yeah, this looks cool, it's got a really cool art style, it's a bit of a, it's a 2D platformer, but I don't know if I can call it a platformer, because there's no jumping, you can't jump, you are a, a dung beetle, you push around this boulder, um, and then you push the boulder onto like, paddles for your pinball, and then you hit it around with pinball mechanics and stuff like that. So I'm not sure, I mean, I, I think it's a platformer, but I, I wanted to see, you know, debate that point as well. Um, yeah. Did, do you think, can you call it a platformer if you can't jump? Well, Bionic How Commander is a platformer and you it? can't jump in it. Yeah, I've heard I play Bionic Commander on Nintendo. Yeah. Or the remake on 360. We get into a lot of, like, debates about what certain genres actually are. Like, we were talking about JRPGs and such the other day on, on somewhere in the community. And um, I just wonder if, if platforming in my head means, you know, you're jumping and trying to make certain jumps and stuff like that, but there's nothing like that in this. But anyway. I, 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 don't, I don't think it has to be necessary you have to jump in it. Yeah. I so always, just, in my head, I think from when I was a kid, I just thought it was like, you're trying to jump onto a platform. Like, you're jumping to a platform and that is called platforming, getting jumping from one platform to the next but anyway it doesn't matter this was a fun game and it is again just like the one that you said it's a a pretty simple completion a lot of little tricky puzzles though that you had to figure out and and a ton of collectibles that i had to try and find um ended up going back to it off stream because it was just too much like just trying everything looking and searching for all the all the different collectibles but it's about a 12 to 15 hour completion um, okay. Oh, and important news for anyone listening that does have Game Pass, it's leaving. Uh, it just got announced yesterday or the day before that it's leaving Game Pass soon. So if you haven't tried it, get to it now uh, before it leaves. End of it's, August? Uh, Wait, what, they don't give you an week? exact date, but usually once they announce it, you've got about two weeks. So it'll be mid-August, Easy, somewhere okay. mid-August. Right. Um, so get right. to that now. Uh, that's about all I've got to say, unless you've got questions about that one. Uh, no, I actually watched you play, and I remember someone because I think it came out last year that game, and I remember someone recommended me to play, and I just never got around to it. But I watching you play, I was like, yeah, I definitely would give it a crack. Yeah, it was, it was fun. It. I don't, I don't regret my time with it. I think the art style was cool. Um, some of the dialogue gets a bit boring. It's uh, they, you can tell they're really, really trying to be funny, and they're not. They're sort of trying too hard. Um, yeah, fair enough. But yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. The music was cool as well. So yeah, definitely worth it, especially if you've got Game Pass. All right. Now, uh, now you said something about a uh, dialogue there. So, dialogue heavy game, aka JRPGs. I played a uh, Cosmic Star Heroine, and not to be confused with the drug, as in a female, uh, you know, w- uh, protagonist. Yes. I, yeah. I I spent the whole stream going. Is it pronounced? I could not work out how to pronounce it. And I was, like, is it heroin or hero? And like, is there like an e at the end of it? And then, yeah. But I found out that apparently the pronunciation of the drug and the female protagonist is the same way. And I was like, oh, okay. Welcome to so, the yeah. English language, eh? Yeah, confusing, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cosmic Star Heroin. I remember seeing it. Um, I was actually watching a YouTube channel where they were talking about top ten best JRPGs for the busy adult, and Ooh. I just felt like playing. It. I just felt like playing a JRPG. I just didn't, like. I still got to get back to Final Fantasy IX, um, but I just don't have. I just don't feel like playing fifty hours just yet. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, what can I? Play? And I remember I, I had the collector's edition of this game. I was like, let's just go play it, and it was excellent. I was like, what? A, I was like, what a surprise. Um, I guess for the main gimmick to, to the people out there who do play JRPGs a lot, um, so the game's only about 15 hours. Now, I did put on hard mode, so it did take a lot longer with some of the battles and stuff like that. Um, but the game's got like a difficulty um, selector, so you can go easy, medium, hard, and extra hard. Changes the bosses, um, everyone's HP and extra moves as well. 
Um, the battle system, however, so it's still turn-based as traditionally it is, um, but you can only use your move once. So if so, characters have like a set of like eight moves, um, or up to eight moves, and then you can change the moves around as well in the options menu once you've unlocked abilities and that. And then once you've used up all your moves, you have to like rest your character to re use all the moves again. So it kind of like forces you to strategize the battle, whether to like attack or to rest to get all your moves back. And yeah, it was just, it was like, I had a lot of, like, it was the most engaging I've ever been in, in a JRPG with a turn-based combat system. Cause usually I just press X to attack. And then, and then obviously when I fight a boss guy, I got to use my brain a bit more. But this time I was like actually using my brain for the entire battle. I was like, damn. Okay. Um, but yeah, really, really good storyline. Now, in regards to the trophies, um, it, it it's so it's pretty easy, and you can do the whole game in easy. So there's like no stress at all. Like don't don't even worry about it. If you do it on hard, it, it's pretty tough. Okay, so that's no. Um, um, just to cut in, there's no like trophies for difficulty. It doesn't affect the trophies. Uh, yeah. There's only there's only one trophy where you have to do the game on the hardest one battle on the hardest difficulty, and there's already like a step by step instruction for the first battle in the game. So just okay. follow that, and then you can get that out the way. Yep. Um, it does have some missables in the game, so you got to make sure there is a couple of Steam guides on the game, and there's a one on the PlayStation web uh, trophies website as well. So it's basically just a couple of NPCs you need to talk to before a certain point in time. Um, the game is very nice that towards the end of the game it does say this is the end of the game. Please have a save file. Uh-huh. So it does actually warn you at the end, which is really nice of the game as well. And um, there's a few secret bosses as well that you got to kill as well. So it was a lot of fun. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I like what you said there about how you change it from easy, medium, or hard, and it actually has tangible differences. Like yeah, like I, because mm, I expected just to have the HP increase and in that, but it actually makes the enemies, the AI, way smarter, mm. and they also do like extra moves that just actual rule in the battle there was this one secret boss i could not beat for the life of me because every fourth turn or something she would just heal herself back to full health so you're meant to on hard mode you're meant to like stun her at on the fourth turn just so that she can't do this healing spell but on easy she just doesn't do it all so it's just like a normal fight so it kind of like changed the strategy completely up because yeah i felt i actually felt like i was playing chess again I really like that in a game where if you change the difficulty it's something because normally you can't see the difference like you can't yeah. physically see it it's just like all of a sudden it's harder like it's usually just rng gets a bit harder or or whatever or yeah, or, or hp or and you take yeah but normally normally like say like it, a lot of games don't you know count the help hp but let's say you have 100 hp on easy normally you put it on yeah. hard you still have 100 hp it's just that a, a hit takes more of that but, correct yeah but it sounds like in this game, let's say if easy was 100, you put it up to hard, you, you've only got 50 or something. Is that what you were saying or not? So, so everything stays the same. The numbers, oh, okay. the enemies do, I guess, full damage um, as opposed to just like on easy, they literally just do like nothing. Just I, yeah, they, okay. It's just there for story mode. On normal, they do like normal damage. On hard, they do normal damage. And on extra hard, I think they do extra damage or something like that. So you've got to be on top of your heels a lot more okay um but yeah it was it was a lot of fun like honest all jrpgs found there because i've finished a lot of my life i was like i was like the entire time i had my mouth was shocked at how much fun i had playing i just didn't expect to be that much fun mm-hmm. and that well taught as well and you said it was good for the uh the busy adult what did they mean busy by that? adult <laughs> what do you so, think so so like I used to, I grew up a long time ago, like used to JRPGs used to be my favorite genres of uh, gaming. Um, I remember in high school I li- I used to just pretty much every fortnight I'd finish a new one. Like I'd finish like all the Final Fantasies, all these like um, one-off games that came on PS2 and GameCube and some on Xbox and Super Nintendo emulator and Sega and everything. And I just finished them a fortnight because like, you know I had like eight hours a day to play games and whatnot. And usually there were like, you know, 60 hour long games between, you know, that. But like to actually play a game that had like a cool storyline, good ca- cast of characters. Each character was completely different. So it changed the combat system as well. Um, the fact that you just got the storyline, got to the point. The grinding was like very minimal. It was amazing. Um, yeah. Like it, anyone can finish it in, in a week. It's awesome. Okay. And and you got the plat as well, right? In, within that. The platinum. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, very cool. Um, I do have. I know we don't normally address the chat here. The chat are saying a few things about the T-shirt. I've noticed, and you might see that that might look like it says "moi moi moi," which is one of Fox's sayings, which comes from "yum yum yum." This actually does say "yum yum yum," uh, but uh, my camera is reversed here so that it looks like I'm looking at Fox guys. So, just to know, I no, don't. Um, I don't sell um, the "moi moi moi" T-shirt, but it might be coming soon. Uh, in Fox's uh, merchandise store. <laughs> but uh, I, like, I say muy caliente every time we get a collectible because I'm Spanish. Yeah, I wonder, I I wonder where you caliente. got that. I wonder where that started. But anyway, I digress. Spanish heritage. Uh, is that Car enough about Ex Cosmic Star? Yeah, yeah, I've got, I've got nothing. I've got nothing else to say. Seems um, pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Ozzy, what's your next game? Uh, I want to talk about a game that you also played, uh, and that is Carry On. Uh, yes. really cool game really cool game it I was good. really it was enjoyed good. my time with this for those that don't know it's um, being called a reverse horror um, and what they mean by that is that you play as the bad guy or the monster in the game and you've got to go and uh, basically eat all the humans really um, <laughs> pretty much it's not it's not really a scary game though so I don't you know, I mean, I guess that's what they. Another reason why it's reverse horror because it's not. It's not horror. You're not scared. Yeah, you're the. You're, you're the. You're the monster. You're the one the, scaring the, them. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Um, and I found this game to be a really good change of pace. Like it's something really different. I even saw you when you first started the game, and and I had the yeah. same thing happen to me. Is it's like takes a bit of getting used to to control this. Uh, for those that don't know, it's like this monster that you control. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to spoil anything. But um, mm. let's just say you don't have legs. You're not walking. It's not like a platformer, like yeah. we're talking about. It's not like a, like it's it gets a, it takes a bit of getting used to to control yeah. the monster. It's it just felt a like a game feeling. that was designed for the PC. Yeah. Okay. I almost felt like I needed a keyboard and mouse, but uh, like yeah, ten minutes in, twenty minutes in, it was back to normal. Yeah. I mean, I, you definitely get used to it, and I think it was kind of cool. Like, I'm glad it felt different. Like, I'm not I'm not using oh, yeah. that as a criticism at all. Like, it just um made you feel like you're playing something different it's not like something you do every day and uh for me it was really really good to play something like this in between some of the more normal games or some of the longer games because it also is not a huge game and i don't think it overstays its welcome in that as well no, in that you sort of get to the end of it and you're like you're not necessarily wishing it kept going um you're not glad that it's over because it wasn't good or anything like that either it's just sort of the right length i reckon um and i think it's a on average, it's about a six to eight hour completion for those completionists mm. out there. Um, I guess the worst thing about it is that it's not on PS4, is it? It's not. No, so I, I, because, because I'm a huge Devolver Digital fan. Um, so there's the, that's the publisher that uh, to publish the game. They always just publish the best quality indie games. So I just bought a Nintendo Switch, but yeah, mm. I loved it. Couldn't miss it out. I think it is they also. Are... It's on PC and Xbox and Switch, but not. Yeah, okay. Um, and there's nothing missable either. The other really good thing about it is that you can just enjoy the game, go through the game, don't worry about achievements or trophies. Or Well, actually, it's not trophies. But don't worry about any of that. Just play the game, enjoy it. And when you get to the end, you can go back for... There's only really one missable achievement, well, one group of missable achievements for the uh, containment units, which contain some of your special abilities and stuff like that. Mm. And you can go back for them all at the end of the game. And if you are stuck, I have a guide for all of the containment units on my YouTube channel. I always like to plug that when I'm doing these guys. But um, yeah, definitely go and enjoy the game if you haven't already. And again, it is on Game Pass as well. Uh... I would need someone to correct me in the comments. I'm not sure if it's on PC Game Pass, but it's definitely on uh, Game Pass for Xbox. Uh, what did you think overall, Fox? Oh, yeah, I I, I, I loved it. Yeah, de de pretty much exactly what you just said there. Um, it felt, it was just cool, to, I guess, to play as a monster and like to kill people. Um, just, like, <laughs> Don't just take that just comment out of context. <laughs> <laughs> just cut it out and put it into something else. Um, yeah, it just felt it just felt cool just to play something different. Um, and... The ending was really cool, so hopefully there's hopefully I hope they make a second game. That'd be awesome to see how far they go with it. And um, I I also felt like um, I like the even though it was kind of annoying. I like the way that you I guess you you get special power ups and then you got to like change form to like use all the power ups and that, which I thought was really cool. Like it was actually like mm. quite puzzly as well. It's not like it's not like a straight up like um, and I just walk left and right killing people it's kind of like sometimes you actually did have to use your brain to be yeah, like the, how the, do I get to the how do I get to those people to kill yeah they're definitely yeah definitely I've, I didn't actually mention that it definitely has puzzle elements doesn't it and where you have to actually yeah, yeah. think how do I get from this part to the next and uh, work your way around it so it's definitely it's not just mindless 
killing the cube. It's, it's definitely not mindless. No. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit of thought that goes into it as well. Yeah, definitely a good point, Fox. Um, but yeah, definitely, yeah. I recommend trying. It's it's just one of those games. It's not game of the year. It's not a ten out of ten. It's probably a seven. But it's a good must play seven in my opinion. Like it's like yeah, definitely try it. It's something game. different. Um, I definitely recommend it, guys. Uh, what are we What are we up to next, Fox? All right. So um, speaking of monsters, um, again with monster hard difficulty, Cuphead. <laughs> good so, segue. So, I like it. so as I as I was playing Carrion, um, now this is a funny story, right? So a long time ago when Cuphead came out. Um, I remember the developer was pretty much like, I hate Sony. I'm not putting it on PlayStation. I remember they said something about it. So it was Ooh. it was strictly Xbox exclusive. And then like, and so I was like, oh, God damn it. All right. I remember playing on PC when I used to do YouTube videos. I finished the whole game. And like, I was like, look, I don't do achievements on Steam. So I'll just play the game. And one of my um, YouTube followers bullied me into doing the S ranks, which is not even required. But I was like, oh, all right. And that took me like 30 hours to do the, pretty much the majority of the game, except for the last, I didn't do the last two bosses, but it's not easy. Let's just say that. And um, It's not and an then, easy game uh, to start with, let alone doing the S-Ranks, I can imagine. Not, not at all. And then um, I'll, I'll get to the game in a second. And then um, anyway, so I think a year later, it came on to Switch. And then when it came to Switch, everyone's like, so is it coming on PlayStation now? And literally two weeks before... Um, so while I was, while I was uh, two weeks before I was playing Carrion, I remember, I don't know why, just in the back of my head, I was like looking up interviews with the developer and there's actually an interview where someone came up to the developer and went, is this game coming on PS4? And the developer just laughed at him and said, no. Like, there's <laughs> angry time. Like, in my head, I was like, oh, I just wish it was on PlayStation. Like, I don't know. I just want to, I want to get the trophies for this game. And then, um, and then I'm playing Karen and someone in my chat goes, oi, guess what? I'm like, what? And, and it's like, it's actual coming PS4 right now. And I was like, what? And like, I was in actual shock and disbelief. I've been waiting for this game for three years. Yeah, I and, actually uh, had this on. What you're saying right now is actually one of my news items I wanted to talk about before I knew you were. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, because it's a, the shadow yeah. drop is, is pretty cool. I always love a shadow drop, so. Yeah, so I literally, like, as I was playing Karen, I, like, unplugged. I um uh, I plugged in my PS4, um, quickly downloaded the game. I was like, guys, we're going to finish Karen as quick as we can and get to some car pegs. I just wanted to <laughs> you were excited to play it. Oh, yeah, I, I love that game. But anyway, to anyone who doesn't know who Cuphead, there are some people who do live under a rock. Um, so basically, Cuphead is a... Uh, uh, I guess it's a platformer. Um, it's a, I, I call it more of a boss rush game. So the game is just essentially a game with 1930s art style. So if you ever remember the original Disney cartoon Steamboat Willie, was the um that's pretty much what the art style is based on the 1930s yeah. Yeah, well, the, the, it reminds me of like even the old mickey mouse cartoons like from yeah that's back. what steve Willie was that's the first mickey mouse cartoon there we go <laughs> <laughs> so yeah anyway um uh so um yeah so you you play you play the game and it pretty much it's just like 19 boss guys that you got to kill so basically you, you play as cuphead and mugman something happens your your um soul got stolen by the devil and you've got to try and win your soul back. So you've got to kill these 19 boss guys. So 18 bosses and the 19 bosses, the devil. It is insanely hard. Let's just say that. It is um, it is one of the hardest games out there. Sorry, one of the hardest fair games out there that you can play. Um, basically, it's a run and gun. You can just jump up and down, shoot the enemies. There's um, different strategies in that. There are run and gun levels as well to unlock coins for upgrades. Um, so the trophy pretty much is... The trophies are easy. It's just the game is insane so yeah. yeah so but but the trophies uh, overall like the platinum is e easy e yeah easy <laughs> <laughs> yeah like... so um yeah um so so if, if you guys are interested in getting it basically what you have to do is you have to finish the whole game on normal mode with an a so you have to you do have to get a ranks and everything you can do that on normal mode so normal mode is still fucking hard i had to use the f-bomb there it is really hard and um and then you have to collect all the coins you, you by all the i have to beep that out or not monetize my video now <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding so um i forgot the youtube rules about that so anyway an, um, i have to tick an extra box now you bastard now since you said that i'll say that too <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah you basically have to get a ranks and everything um which, it's not too hard usually if you beat the boss relatively quickly you usually have it so it's not too hard um you have to get all the coins in the game uh, there's plenty of guides out there you have to do a pacifist run so you have to do the run and gun levels in the game without killing a single enemy so pretty much have to like 
run through it all and dodge everything like a champ. You're not allowed to touch a single enemy, which is pretty. Which is pretty. That's pretty tough as well. Um, and you have to get one S rank. So don't do what I'm doing. I'm actually going out of my way and doing the entire game on expert mode and getting S rank, which means I can't get hit um, unless I use a special power, which I found out later. Um, but anyway, so basically um, you're crazy. Yep, gotcha. Continue. Yeah, yeah. So basically, I'm doing something that's not even required for the trophy. I'm just doing it just for pure bragging rights. For a flex. Just for the pure love of the game. Just pure, pure for the pure love of the game. I love it that much. Yeah. So you just have to get one S rank. At least the first boss is pretty. I find it easy, but relatively easy compared to the. Wasn't it um, made by a very very small development team too? Like originally one or two guys. Yeah, so like. Um, I actually don't remember how big their team was, but they spent years just, making this game. Just was... the artwork took years because each each individual frame is hand drawn, apparently. Yeah, correct. So yeah, the whole game, like I said, nineteen thirties uh, cartoon drawings like that Walt Disney did with Steamboat Willie, the first Mickey Mouse cartoon. So the whole game's a hand drawn. It's got like the grainy filter on it. The the soundtrack is awesome. It's so much fun. Um, honest, it's it's a must play game. Like. You can do it on easy mode, and I don't know how easy mode, easy, easy mode. I don't think it is actually that easy, but <laughs> it's it's just a site for like it's just a anyone who's played the game they usually end up either loving it or they love it. So mm. that's that's the. Kind I of love the look game. of the game. I haven't played it myself, but I love the look. Um, I don't yeah. like the t look of the type of gameplay. It doesn't interest me that much, and that's why I haven't played it. But the look of it looks pretty cool. Oh yeah, I'd I'd love to see I don't know someone else try to make that art style, but yeah, it's it, it will take too long to make it anyway. Yeah, yeah. All right, very very cool. Uh, now I guess I can move on to the next game that I wanted to talk about. And I just okay. finished this game last night on stream, and I I am very excited about this game. Uh, and that oh you're finished about Cuphead, yeah? Sorry. Yeah, I'm done. Done. Go for it. Uh, Yakuza Kiwami. Um, obviously I'm very, very late to this game, but for a lot of Xbox, uh, players out there and a lot of Game Pass owners out there, uh, we're all just starting to experience the Yakuza series for the first time. And I just finished Yakuza Kiwami last night. In terms of finish, I mean, I've only done the story, um, because these games are way too big in terms of the completion. Uh, but, right. uh, and for those that don't know, Yakuza Kiwami is a remake of, y of Yakuza 1. So it's like a remake of the first game and it uh, directly follows on from Yakuza 0, which was the prequel that they made for this as well um, and which we played a few weeks ago. I think I talked about it on one of these uh, shows. Um, now the game itself, super, super slow start, but the same thing that I absolutely loved about Yakuza 0 is the story in these games so far is just amazing. I'll, a few times, even last night on stream, a few times, and, and this might turn some people off, but a few times we're sitting there watching cutscenes and stuff. My controller died from having it <laughs> sit there, not touching it for so long, or goes into that standby mode where you have to quickly press something. And um, I was just sitting there enjoying it and, and um, almost uh, teared up last night at the end as well. I'm not going to say... Wow. I'm not going to say... I didn't, know you, I didn't know you could cry about games, Ozzy. I'm not going to say anything about why, but oh yeah, mate, I'm, I, I, I get there. Real man cry, you know that, and real man wear pink. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just the story. Oh, I don't think this game stacks up in terms of the gameplay and all the side stuff that are in the other game. Um, and just that, that quality. And the, like I said before, the story got started really, really slow and it, I was worried for a while. But by the yeah. end of it, absolutely love the story. One of my favorite, if you combine it with Zero, one of my favorite stories in video games of all time. Uh, and I'm not not just exaggerating. It's just really really cool. I love it. I, like I said, nearly teared up. I was because I care about the characters, um, yeah. which whenever a game does that, I'm really happy with it. Um, but as I briefly mentioned before, really really huge completion. Not as big as zero, but this one is predicted to take you over sixty hours. So that's, that's significantly shorter though than zero. And yeah, I mean the other ones, zero. Though. I mean over a hundred, and I'm not even close to the completion. But so it is a lot shorter. Um, and that, I think that just says um, there's there's kind of less to do. It's almost the same to do, but kind of less. You, just... you know, Ozzy, um, this game was originally a PS2 game. So mm. I think like, that attributes then... to why it's a slow start. Like, because they didn't change the story or the, the like the, the build up to it or anything like that. So it's sort of, a, you can tell it's sort of an older game. Is that what you're getting at or? 
Oh no no not the, that okay. the slow stuff's nothing to do with that. That's just that's just writing in general. Yeah. Um, no, I'm just saying that the game was originally like a PS2 game, so that's why it's probably like a bit um shorter, not as much stuff to do because the game wasn't. Oh yeah, because I remember I, fit I, it into I, what you could make back then as well. Yeah. Yeah, four point seven gigabyte disc back yeah. then DVD yeah, that disc. Makes sense. So yeah, I remember playing it. Um, I didn't play much of it, but I did play it, and um, and then they re-released it as Kiwami on was it PS3. PS4. I don't, I don't know. I don't know the me. timeline on it because I'm. I'm and, then, and then now it's on yeah, Xbox. But yeah, only just sort of getting them now, and uh, I'll be uh, getting to Kiwami 2 as soon as I can because that I'll talk about it later in the show. But that just hit Game Pass as well. So, and that's why I just wanted to rush through the story. And that could be another reason why I'm saying the side stuff isn't as good because I didn't dig deep into the side stuff because I was purposely just rushing through the story. And I think that alone took took about 18 to 20 hours just this just trying to get through the story as quickly as I could, which. And, uh, and it's enough for me. Yes, if I wanted to go back and complete it, there'd be a lot to do and I, I could still enjoy it. It's still a great game. But yeah, really, really cool. Can't wait to, to see what happens next in that story. Um, yeah. You haven't played I, I the series, have you? So, And plus, I don't want to go into spoilers. I really could. First game, yeah. I could do a whole other show where we just do go into spoilers <laughs> and talk about the Yakuza series Yakuza, so far. Yeah. I might do that one day. That would be really cool. Let me know in the comments I, if you want to see that. <laughs> I don't think I've ever met anyone who's actually finished all seven games. Well, I don't think I'm ever going to get the chance unless they keep remaking them because I'm not going to go back and play the ones they haven't remade. Like, So I'm doing Zero, I'm doing Kiwami and Kiwami 2, and that's where it'll stop until 7 comes out later this year. So I'm going to have to skip yeah. a few, I guess. And 7 is like a reboot anyway. The I, I don't even think they're calling it 7, are they? They're calling it Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, something like that. I think it's a reboot, and I know they said it's a brand new character and stuff like that, so I don't know if that, if it connects... I have to look that up. Uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah. anyway, that's enough about that. That is what we've been playing. Uh, we are going to move on to the news of the week, Fox. Um, yeah. Now, obviously, one of the biggest things that happened since we last recorded was the Xbox Series X Games Showcase. Uh, All right. Obviously, I was very, very into that. I did a reactions show with our uh, host from last time, Reptar on Ice. He uh, came in and... Uh, watched the show with me where we reacted to that so if you want to get our initial thoughts on that head over to my youtube channel and have a look at that uh but rather than go into everything that was shown and talk about each little thing uh i'm sure that anyone who really cares about it already knows what was shown and stuff like that so we're not going to cover that mm. so to speak i'd rather have a quick chat about whether we're excited or not for the next generation whether this show helped that yeah, excitement or not uh, but just sort of talk about that in a more general way. What do you reckon? Yeah, it sounds, sounds good to me. Yeah. I will just quickly say that probably my top three picks of that show were Halo. Uh, a lot of people have picked on, uh, there's a lot of social media about Halo, how it didn't yeah. do well and all the graphics um, criticism and all of that. I don't give two shits about any of that. I really liked the, the trailer because it had massive Halo 1 vibes and I'm a massive Halo 1 fan. I'm not a fan of Halo 4 or 5, but I loved the feeling that that trailer gave me. So I was happy. Um, and I also am really excited about Fable and Avowed. Um, but that, mm. that's a discussion for another day. But yeah, what are you thinking about? We're getting close now to the next generation. Where are you? Um, you're someone, I, I, I will preface this by saying that you're someone who wants to see it and feel it before you really make any comments on it. But uh, yeah, yeah. Where well, are you I, at I, anyway? And so like as a, as a show, so at least I did show some games. Um, I was, I... Halo, I didn't quite like. I only found out because I, I came to the, your um, live show late, so I didn't actually see what happened to Halo. And I heard all the news about, it and I was like, "Oh, geez." Um, I went back and watched the trailer, and I was like, "I didn't see what was <laughs> actually quite." I just didn't get what happened. Why everyone was going so angry or not? Maybe they expected something a bit higher. I don't know. I'm mm. I'm actually curious to see what the game will end up looking like at the end. Um, the games I was most excited for was probably. Um, uh what's it called i was really excited avowed looks really cool i'm really happy that obsidians um is gets to do like, i'm not into fantasy rpgs but i actually think avowed is actually like kind of like a, a middle finger to bethesda honestly actually i think I'm it's not sure meant to be the... a, not maybe a middle finger but i think it's meant to be hey you guys think you can make a good one of these check this out like like yeah because yeah. I, I, do you know the story of obsidian how they got formed yeah 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 so they they um fallout one and two right is that what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so the yeah. yeah the original team made Fallout One and Two, and then mm. a few other classic uh, computer RPGs, and then the company went bankrupt, and then Bethesda bought Fallout, and then 
I know some people think the game got butchered, whatnot. And then Obsidian made that sequel to New Vegas. Everyone loves New Vegas. And then Obsidian made you know sequel to a few other like Star Wars mm. Republic Two. Which people really like. Oh, not actually. People don't like that one as much. But anyway. But basically, um, Obsidian but yeah. doesn't have many fat. Like they've got a lot of good games in their resume. Like correct. Yeah, their their resume is actually pretty damn good. Mm. And I I feel like because there's I think there's a few people out there, um, me included, who just think Bethesda just. They don't care anymore. Um, I, I don't think they stopped caring a long time ago. But I feel like Obsidian, like they at that stage, were all right. Let's let's see if we can make a game way better than Skyrim, less buggy, more engaging combat, just a better game in general. Um, and I, I hope I hope they do a good job because uh, Outer Worlds is pretty cool, and um, a few of the other games they made have been pretty dope as well. So yeah, well, and that that goes to your point as well. I love that. So Outer Worlds is a uh, Fallout replacement. I know I've heard a lot of people mm. say that it's the the better fallout that we should have got. Um, and they're yeah. doing a great job. Some more DLC was announced during the show for that. And I can't wait for right. that. Yeah, yeah. I absolutely love Outer Worlds. I love that game. I would have been happy if their next game, they had to have announced a sequel. I would have been happy with that. But they've gone and gone, okay, so there's our fallout replacement. Now let's do our Skyrim <laughs> replacement. <laughs> yeah, I know, and right. And they're going for this fantasy RPG. And that's probably, if when it's all said and done, when all of these games that are in that show are, are finally out and we've got our hands on all of the games, it'll probably, my prediction right now would be that will be the best of the lot like it will be the most yeah. well-made game the most full round well-rounded game it'll be a, a, i've got high hopes obviously basically yeah. and i can't wait i can't wait for that game um yeah i was um the games i was more excited for besides that one that looked really cool i'm really pumped for psychonauts too i think the first game is excellent like one of the best i can't even call it a kid's game because there's so many dark tones in psychonauts because kind of deals with mental illness and stuff but like in a light-hearted fun way so I don't know how you can make it, but they did it. Yeah, Shafe is a genius. Oh, no, um, I just found out I get. To, I've never. I never played Psychonauts one. I never had it back in the day. Never got it. Yeah. Um, but it is part of the backwards compatible program. I can play it on Xbox now if I want to. So I'm probably going to awesome. play that in the lead up to number two coming out. So yeah, definitely. And um, I was actually very surprised that there's a Stalker two got announced because I actually really was a big fan of the original PC Stalker games. So. And for me, that actually um, looks really cool. It looks like a really cool sort of post-apocalyptic world, first-person shooter. Yeah, I'm just trying to remember. And they I said they're focusing Stalk on story, which is right up my alley. Yeah, because um, the original Stalker was one of those, I call it janky PC games, where I, I, a flawed a flawed 6 or a flawed 7, as I sometimes say, that I, I, I had this saying where I rather play a, a, a flawed 6 that's really cool or interesting than a boring 8. Um, and that's what Stalker is. It's like kind of like a... It's kind of like Fallout, but it's like way more serious and darker. And because it's like it's on a Russian, um, I think it's based on a Russian novel as well. So it's just extra like mm. sinister and evil. And it's just got like bad, horrible characters in it. And everyone's just just a horrible person. And yeah, it that. makes me think of the Metro series as well a little bit. It's yeah, got a it's, similar it's, setting, obviously. So Yeah, well, when Metro 1 came out, actually people said, is this like meant to be like they thought they were copying Stalker in a way. Okay, that makes sense um, then. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks it look, that looks really cool. So I think that was the highlight, and I'm actually surprised that Tetris Effect as well is coming on Xbox. That was actually a PS4 exclusive that game. So mm. go on your Xbox, you stole one there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see a game like that. I'm not a Tetris man, but I see a, an opportunity to maybe oh, like, play for, with viewers. I think it could be a fun streaming. Thing yeah, Tetris Effect's a visual and audio experience. Let's just say that. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, the other thing I saw there was a lot of negative commentary about you know, not enough big games. It's still not hmm. enough um, not to compete. Yeah. I think a lot of people are, were expecting Xbox to come out and go, here's 10 amazing games all coming out at launch. Correct, yeah. And I, I think if they did that, yes, that would make a lot of lot of the commentary or the commentary happy. More positive. More positive. But I don't think it would be a smart decision because you don't want to put everything out all at once and then have nothing Correct. left. We, and I heard Phil Spencer say it recently that we're not going to go for this big, big, massive launch where everything hits you in the face straight away. What we want to do is we want to launch with a couple of good games and then have games coming out periodically thereafter so that you know, every couple of months or whatever it might be, you've got another big game to play, another big exclusive, because as we know, they did not do that this generation. They, yeah. The exclusives, we have said it before, are just terrible. Like, yeah. um, and my money is on Microsoft fixing that with all the new studios that they've bought. But I'm actually cool that, I, I like that, you know, obviously they're putting all their money in the in the Halo basket for launch and they, mm. and it, you know, they need to fix it because a lot of people didn't like four and then definitely didn't like five. Um, yeah. So, but I'm kind of happy that that's going to be the big launch title. And then what they showed is obviously Fable and Avowed are a long way off, but 
we've got time to then get hyped even more for those games and 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 I think I've heard you say this before the longer a game takes the better like as long as they don't release a game before it's ready like, as long as it's not Jean Newcom forever then yeah yeah don't ru- like, what I mean by that is don't rush a game out just for a launch right, or whatever yeah just is, for just for yeah just make the game what it's meant to be like like we said before I trust Obsidian make that game yeah. and release it when it's ready don't rush yeah. for some ridiculous deadline is what I'm saying um, right, yeah. And I, yeah, I think we'll, we've still got a few more games that X, uh, Xbox are going to show while we are talking about the Xbox Game Showcase. I think um, they've bought something like 12 new studios in the last five years that are all mm. working on next-gen games. Did we see games from all of those studios yet? No, we didn't. So oh. I'm excited. Oh, the mm-hmm. other good point was um, Hellblade are using Unreal Engine 5, the Hellblade 2 game. Um, That's going to be exciting to play. Yeah, I'm just, and, and they haven't said enough about this yet, but I'm wondering what the scope of that game is going to be. Like, you know, the, the first game was really, really cool. We all know that, right? And it, yeah. it was quite small. It's like a eight hour game, roughly from memory. Um, yeah, and you kind of just follow like a very, it's very I don't know linear. It's, yeah, it's like you're pretty much a corridor. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's still a very well made game. I'm wondering if they take all those concepts, but then turn it into a bigger game. I think Reptile was talking about it last show, about it possibly, like, could they make it God of War like? I mean, the setting yeah, fits that. Could they make it on that scope? The fact that they're using Unreal Engine Five, that the, that the uh, release a window is pushed out, like we don't know when it's coming out, because um, a lot of people were predicting it would come out this year. The fact that it's going to take even longer means it's probably a bigger. Hopefully, it means it's a bigger game. I'm kind of, I'm excited. Like a lot of negativity about the show, but I'm kind of excited. And again, I'm biased. I'm the Xbox guy. <laughs> Everyone tells well, me I, I'm biased. I, I should think this whole um, hype thing, I think this is, I think this is what's almost kind of like that the world is revolving around that. We build these shows up so much in our own brains. I'm not part of this demographic at all. I just don't care about these shows at all. Mm. I just, I'll just play it. when the game comes out, I'll play it. Then I don't care. Um, but I feel like all these people put so much emotions and hype into everything. So then when a show comes out, if it doesn't tick all these che- these checklists that they've yeah. uh, visualized in their brain, they just get so pissed off. And it's not like, uh, it's not, they're either going to be the most happiest person in the world or they're going to be like, this is the worst show I've ever seen ever. I'm like, well, I'm, you probably said the same thing about that last year and then the year before you that. You just set yourself that. up for disappointment. It's almost impossible to please that. And um, and I kind of, and that's why I really like, like back to the Devolver Digital um, Showcase. So if anyone watched this, so there's an indie developer that did a showcase. In the showcase, they're pretty much all making fun of CEOs, how much pressure they are to, in the, in the showcase, they kept saying, just make a game up. Just put, just, everyone just wants hype. No one cares about anything. Just, just make something up. And like the whole showcase is just effectively everyone just lying to the audience about games coming out because no one really because no one actually at the end of the day you don't really look back after the game comes out you don't look back at that showcase but oh now that showcase is good they just want to hear hype and stuff like that so yeah no, i, no, I think you make I, think people, I think you make a good point definitely yeah i think people just need to just relax <laughs> just the show comes out there's a cool game awesome if a cool game doesn't come out that's fine yeah. <laughs> just just breathe people breathe and, and then the only other real big commentary mm. that's going around that i want to discuss real quickly before we move on is yeah. a lot of and then this happens with everything and i get accused of being biased when i bring this sort of stuff up but a lot of uh commentary is about how much playstation is beating xbox and how much it's all gonna win and blah 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 and the main argument that i hear is um and and that xbox didn't fix this with this showcase is that mm. ps4 win because ps4 have got all the good exclusives and yeah. while i would look back on this generation we've just had and 100 percent agree with that uh, PlayStation exclusives from the PS4, uh, like, not even compare. Like, Xbox are not even close. Like, if you mm. had to rate Xbox exclusives for the generation, you're going to give it... I'd give them a 10 out of 10. I'd give them higher than a 10 out of 10 if I could. Uh, I can. Yeah. I don't even play these games, and I can name, like, Spider-Man, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us 2, all these amazing games that came out. Oh, Ghost of Tsushima, the latest one that came out on PS4. That Xbox have nothing even close to competing with any of those. And when even if you add um, Gears Five and Halo Five, nah, they do not compare. They're not even close. Um, I totally see that, and that is a that is a valid argument for PS4 versus Xbox One. But I don't sit here and cop it when people are bringing it up, saying that's why PS5's winning, because. As I said before, Xbox and Microsoft aren't stupid. They've bought all these new studios. Uh, 
PlayStation 5, I bet, is going to be amazing. I bet you they're going to continue having all these amazing exclusives because they'd be silly not to. They've seen how much money it made them, how popular it made them, how many units the PS4 sold because of all these amazing exclusives. Yeah, correct. So PS5 and Sony are going to keep doing that. Good. It's going to be amazing. They're going to have all these awesome exclusives again for the PS5, but Xbox have to come in and maybe not beat that. They might not be able to beat that, but maybe compete, like get some sort of, yeah. get closer well, to, to parity. A lot of people don't bring up this point. Um, also, I was in the PS4 exclusive, missed out Bloodborne, which is the best exclusive. Sorry. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but with the PS3 and 360, the PS3 actually had like better exclusives as well. But the 360 just like outsold the PS3 hard. Like only so at it's the start, not... though. PS3 ended up catching up. I never saw it the catch up. To the up. Or it didn't quite catch up, but it uh, let's say if, oh, okay. I, it I, didn't, I didn't see that towards the end. Yeah, uh, but yeah, Xbox well, 360 got a massive lead at the start. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I remember the PS3 was a pain in the ass to program for. So a lot of um the games that were like on 360 and PS3, the 360 version was actually better. Yeah, like Fallout 3 and even Bayonetta as well was better on 360. And it had, and it had third party exclusives like Mass Effect and stuff like that. The 360, yeah, originally, yeah, yeah, originally, yeah, yeah. Yep. But I don't. Oh, at the end of the day, like as long as I don't know, people still like to argue all the time, but I just I don't care. I just play the game. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, but, I I sit here as I said, I'm an Xbox guy, but. I, I love the PlayStation. I love the PlayStation 4, even though I don't own one and I don't plan on playing it and stuff like that. I, 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 you can sit back. If you had had a PlayStation 4 this whole generation, you can sit there and be very, very happy. And I'm happy for you if that's one of you. Um, I'm looking forward, though. I'm looking forward and I'm sitting here probably more hopeful than anything that Xbox evens that up a bit. And I, I think they can with the studios that have bought. We just talked about Obsidian. That's just one yeah, of yeah. many. Like... That Avowed game looks amazing, and I'm hoping... I mean, I don't like exclusive games. I wish everyone got to play everything, but I'm, I, in that Obsidian game, I'm hoping yeah. that is one of the games that, pe- that Xbox people can sit back and be proud of and go, look what we've got. We've got this exclusive game. <laughs> I, think you guys, I, think you guys, I think you guys need something to be proud of. Like, yeah. I, like we discussed before we started this podcast, we probably think Falls is the best exclusive. Yeah, and that's not great because it's too niche. Like, I want something... Yeah, it's ra- racing bigger. simulations. Yeah, very yeah. small audience. Yep, yep. All right. Well, I think uh, I'm I'm happy with that. I don't need to discuss the show anymore. I'm happy to keep seeing what's coming, um, and I'm looking forward yeah. to seeing uh, if they. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but I'm looking forward to seeing if they're going to do another show. Um, I want that to sort of lead into uh, the. I've just got a, a few news topics I wanted to talk about just briefly yeah, before we move on to the next down, segment. Man. Is um, Halo Infinite multiplayer? We can quickly talk about this. Is going to be free to play. Um, do we care? I, I, I'm uh, interested I, in your I, point I, of view because you're again from another yeah, look, I, side of it. I um no, sorry. Right. I used to I used to play Halo One and Two multiplayer. So that's when before Xbox no Xbox Live came out when Number Two came out. But I remember doing LAN parties for Halo One and Two. Um, I I, I won't be playing. I just don't play multiplayer anymore. But mm. I, I think it's a big I think it's a big move because um I think that free to play market and because at least. At least Microsoft, they like. I mean, not everyone's a Halo fan, but at least they do care about their games. So it's a yeah. good quality. And Halo player, multiplayer so... has always been at a pretty high. I mean, we are the wrong two people because yeah. neither of us play much yeah, multiplayer. Yeah, But Halo no, no. multiplayer is still high regarded, isn't it? Like from it's 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 top tier top tier multiplayer. So yeah. good on good on them. I I really hope it helps them out too. My only argument on it was also though that it almost like, and I'm biased with the, my Game Pass, but. It's free to play anyway if you have Game Pass. So if you're going to be playing Halo, I reckon you're probably silly not to have Game Pass because if you get Game Pass, you get Halo Infinite, you'll get the the single player as well for free. Yeah, as part of your subscription. So I don't know if it's a mute point, but it definitely made the news, and I was like, okay, maybe it'll bring some people in to try it. Um, That's the thing um, about yeah, game like a lot of people haven't been talking about how good Game Pass is because like. That, um, so I guess back to Netflix I get because that's what Game Pass effective is. It's Netflix yeah. for the Xbox. Mm. Um, well, ne- we all know what Netflix did to the industry. It killed um, killed the video store effectively. Yep. Um, a lot of people who I know don't really care about going to the movies like get like a big big value, get all these TV shows and movies and that. And um, and then everyone started copying Netflix because it did so well. And, mm. and now Microsoft's doing their own Netflix for Game Pass. It's such a good deal. And that's what we didn't talk and, about from the show. Everything that was on that show, straight to Game, on Pass. Game Pass. Straight to Game Pass. Yeah. 
Like that's a that, that's a no brainer. Like I heard unless um, if you're like one of those dumb Fortnite kids that only play one game or three games on for the entire year, you'd be dumb not to get a game pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those guys aren't gonna get game pass, but everyone yeah, else like it is like Christmas when you first look at game pass, I can tell you that. Yeah, so only um, needs to needs to do that, but anyway. I had a few people in my stream just the other day and they were watching us play Grounded, which I'm playing after this show um, with viewers. And they were like, oh, I really want to play this. It's Xbox exclusive. Oh, no. And I said, oh, well, actually, it's available on Game Pass for PC as well. And a couple of people, while I was still on my stream, went and checked out Game Pass for PC and came back and gone, my mind is blown. Like, because it (laughs) costs a dollar at the moment, right? So these these people that I'm speaking of went and paid one dollar to get Game Pass and all of a sudden, they have over a hundred new games to play, and yep. and I could oh, off the top of my head, I can name like ten or twenty that are worth playing that you've probably never yeah. heard of or never tried. I'm just like, why yeah. wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Um, <laughs> I, I forgot what I talk, I I don't know where I read this bit of information, but about Game Pass because someone argued that it ruins indie games um, in the regards that because game pass is so cheap like how much money does microsoft give to that developer for putting their game in game pass right mm. so like all those like really small games right um but apparently some of those games have sold a lot better now due to game pass and i guess yeah they, because have, they more make their, been... i mean i know they make their individual deals with microsoft like and, right. and microsoft tracks how many people download the game how many hours people spend in the game yeah and, yeah. and you can um put that all into the contracts like you, you might get paid a certain amount per download you might get paid a certain amount per um, time played stuff like that. Mm. So these developers yeah. aren't not getting paid, like just because they're not selling yeah. the the game. Yeah, like, and I, I actually think it has a flow on effect that now I guess there's, yeah, you, know, you know, Aussie sometimes we always get these people that come to our Twitch and be like, oh, I got nothing to play, mm. and like if they had Game Pass, that's already like a huge chunk of games right there, and then they can try anything. And if they're an open minded game and they can try all these games out, they would have never even tried, would even heard of it in the first place. Yeah. I've I've had a, I've had numerous people uh, the one I just spoke about before that that started Game Pass I've had numerous people come to my stream and say oh I'm bored I've got nothing to play and I say do you have Game Pass and they might say yes and I say I, I went through it the other day I had someone this exact situation they came to my stream mm. and I brought up Game Pass live on stream and I said I'm going to name ten five ten games that you should try and I didn't even yeah. get past D so they were in alphabetical order <laughs> I did not get yeah. past D and I named I don't know five six seven games from A to D um, that they should try and they're still playing those games now. This person I'm talking about has been playing these games for two weeks, getting two weeks worth of gaming enjoyment out of it after coming to me saying, oh, they're bored, I've got nothing to play. <laughs> like, like I used, to, I used to make fun of um people uh, but in that PS3 and 360 generation, I swear there was like this like trifecta in their brain. I don't know how it began, but like all they would play is whatever sport game they like, say either FIFA or Madden or whatever, then whatever the Call of Duty game was, um, whatever the Assassin's Creed game was, maybe they might try Far Cry, maybe they might try Grand Theft Auto or Skyrim, and they'll just be stuck in this loop playing those games with the yearly releases, yeah. not realizing there's all these games all that these came out. Games and I think game, yeah. yeah, I think Game Pass, and um, yeah, like I really hope if you do have Game Pass and you've only played two games on it, you're selling yourself short. Mm. Absolutely. I do apologize to people that don't have Game Pass or don't like us chatting about Game Pass because I get told off for it a lot. I love talking about Game Pass. I don't even have 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 it. I'm I'm probably going to get Game Pass on PC eventually. Yeah, once it's all fixed as well. All right, let's let's move on from that. Um, The next thing is sort of in the same ballpark anyway. I want to say, I want to know if there's, I I know there's a rumored PS5 event, uh, State of Play or whatever they call it, for August, but yeah. they still haven't confirmed it, and it's the second of August. So I'm wondering if that's going to happen. Um, yeah. Do you have any information on that? Like, do you know if there's? I haven't. I haven't, I haven't seen anything. Okay. Um, well. they, they might do one. I reckon, I reckon they will do one more show though before they announce the 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 the, the console if it ever will get released. It feels yeah. like it's yeah. not. Well, <laughs> it feels we're, like Xbox we're in August. We've got ever. no price. We've got no release date. <laughs> more on that a bit yeah. later. Now I want to talk about that next thing that you brought up before because you played yeah. played it. Um, yeah. Just real briefly, I just thought it was worth talking about because Cuphead just shadow dropping. I, I'm more excited not because of the game or that it's came just dropped to PS4. I just love a shadow drop. I, I don't know why. I just loved it, and I w- I wasn't in your stream, but I would have loved to be in your stream when someone came and said, "Hey, it just got announced. It's on PS4 now." Like, what was your mindset when that happened? 
my brain was in absolute denial. Um, I was just like, I almost said like, don't F with me. Like, do not lie to me right now. Like I was like, not in the mood. Yeah, And yeah, then yeah. like, just saying, and then just like turning it on and I'm just saying like, it's there. And I'm like, I was like, no, it's not. And like, I, I, like I was on my switch and I had to like unplug my HDMI cable, put it into the PS, just the way my system set up. Yeah. Put it into the PS4, go into the PlayStation store and then type in C, U, P and my heart's racing. And I just see it there. I'm like, it's there. And like, I clicked on it and I went by it and I bought it straight away. And like, yeah, see, like that, I couldn't wait. I was... That's why I brought this up for the moments like that. That's why a shadow drop drop is really, really cool. It's a, and this, this is why I don't care about like, like, uh, I guess game show, uh, like the uh, hype shows and that, because people just build up this hype and hype and hype and then they either get disappointed or not. I'm way more excited now because this game came out of nowhere. And I've been, I built my own internal hype for something that never even was never even confirmed ever. Yeah. And they even did like a stop motion. I don't know if you saw the announcement trailer, Ozzy, but they did like a full like stop motion animation. And stop motion animation takes ages to do. Like that trailer probably would have costed like huge money and time to do. Mm. And they just did a stop motion animation trailer. Well, they made for a it. lot of money with Cuphead. It's a very popular game. Oh, yeah. So they've yeah, done one. Well. And uh, I just love those moments. It would be an even better moment if it was a brand new game that Shadow Drop. The only one that comes to oh, my yeah. mind uh, in recent times is uh, Apex Legends, which wasn't a game for me. But I, I even saw the hype around that when it just like no one knew about this game. And then all of a sudden it was out now. Um, yeah. I think that's really, really cool. And some games can get away with it. Other games, you shouldn't do it. You need to advertise yeah, and stuff like that. So it's a bit of a funny it's almost like you can. It's almost like you can only really do it for um, a game that's already out and then it's on another console that... Yeah, or I think never... I think another way you could maybe do it would be if you've been advertising the game, like we all know... Uh, let's pick Valhalla. Oh, no, we've already got a release date for that. Just some uh, big Halo? game that's been advertised and doesn't have a mm. release date, but you know it's coming, but you think mm. it's like maybe a few months away because you don't have a release date. Normally, you're going to get a release date a few months before it actually comes out, and then all of a sudden, they come out yeah, and yeah. bam, it's out. So it's a game you already know about, but you don't know when it's coming, and then bam, it's there. Yeah. That would be cool too. I need to do more of those, honestly. Yeah. Okay, and one other news item before we move on is a game I've already mentioned a couple of times in the stream, and that is Grounded. I've had a lot of fun playing it. It's a really cool game. It's from Obsidian as well. We've talked a lot about Obsidian already today. And it reached uh, 1 million players in the first 48 hours. And it's it's only an early access. It's like it's game preview program game. Uh, and um, what I like about that news is, like, number one, like, it's a brand new IP, which is very hard to get 1 million people to play a game like that. Two, it's like a pretty unique concept. Like I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's a, not a battle royale. Being... Like normally, this would have to be a battle royale to get these sorts of numbers. Yeah, almost. Um, and number three, like the word alpha. Alpha is like before beta. Alpha yeah, is yeah. like alpha. Every time I see an alpha, it always looks like crap. Like a beta, sometimes I'd be like, oh, I might, I might play it. Yeah. Um, I haven't done a beta in ages, but an alpha, I'm like, no, I'm not gonna bother. But like, it almost looks like a complete game. Yeah, it actually whatever, looks whatever. really good for whatever stage it's at, and yeah. and all that. It actually looks really good. There was hardly any bugs. Look, we did come across a. F oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, oh my god, that was, that was a bad joke. <laughs> I didn't even mean that or plan you that. No, you're whatever, whatever. <laughs> you know I didn't. All right, all right. I'm going I, I trust, about I'll it. This one. Um, but glitches. Let's like, can I call it? There were, yeah, yeah. We hardly saw any. Um, there was a couple, but nothing like yeah. game breaking or anything like that. And it even warns you at the start that there may be crashes and, and bugs. <laughs> um, yeah. But, um, and, and it's expected because it's you, you early access. It's an alpha. Or, yeah, exactly. Um, and I normally wouldn't, but I just I just liked this whole concept ever since I first saw it announced. And, uh, and I'm glad I did try. I normally wouldn't try a, a game preview game. I want to wait until it comes out with achievements normally because I'm stubborn. Um, yeah, yeah. But I'm glad I tried it, and we're going to be playing some more later on tonight with viewers, so stick around for that. Um, but I thought it was awesome that they've already had 1 million players, especially considering it's a semi-exclusive, like it's only on Xbox and PC as well. Um, so for them to get 1 million players in the first weekend or whatever it is, it was uh, it was pretty cool. Um, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. I think, and, I, I, and what I actually like about that as well is it sets a, it sets a precedent that as long as you make an alpha good quality, people come and play it. Because yeah. the amount of like half ass alphas I've seen there, and the developers just like, oh, you know, and then like, and then the and then the pro the game gets delayed, and then the game comes out, and everyone just doesn't like it, like, or like it just doesn't have enough views. Like, 
just if you make a good game, just just make it good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really good point. Product out. I like that. Like you said, it's alpha, it's not or whatever, half but I like that it's like it's not at a broken stage. It's not like a rushed. Uh, like they've put it's, it. It's out. almost like that level that's out is complete or, or almost complete. I would have, you know what? Apart from it um, lacking the like future content, like which they said they're bringing an update once a month at the moment. Um, mm. Like, because it would be pretty short if it, if you called it complete. But what mm. is there is at a standard that you would be play, You could play that on day one and think this is a released game. Like it's not broken, which is what I expected for an alpha. And the other um, thing I like to mention is um, I don't play survival games. Um, I think the concept is good, but every single survival game that I've seen and people have tried to get me to play, they just look so bad incomplete buggy janky just half assed mm. like i mm. wouldn't i wouldn't even waste a, a minute of my life playing because i just know like like i, I don't yeah. want to sound like arrogant but i do have high standards of games and i'm just like i wouldn't waste my time playing that yeah. yeah when i saw that game i was like i would actually play that yeah i would absolutely play that i got one word for that i think this is the one word that explains that obsidian. what is it obsidian. <laughs> obsidian. <laughs> obsidian effect yeah they they would just they've got this I, this, they've got it's their true. own you can standard. Tell they care about the game. They've got their own standard. They're not going to release yeah. something that just is what you just described. They're not going to do that. So I'm happy for them. Really, like, really cool. Like, I don't want to bag like I don't know, say Ark Survival. I think Grounded looks more complete than Ark Survival. My game's been out for ages. Yeah, fair enough. I can't comment on because I haven't. I've never really played that either. But um, did did that ever actually get a full release yet, or is that still in preview? <laughs> I don't know. I honestly think no survival game gets completed. They just they just get people to get in their sucker and take their money, and then just uh, w once the player base dies out or people get bored of it, they go, "Oh crap!" And then they I don't know. Happened with that game. Um, what was the first really big survival game that we used to play? De uh, Day Z is that the one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I remember that was like that was like the longest earlier access, and at the time that was the that was the precedent of like making that type of game. So I'll, I'll give him a pass for that, but that game was never completed and still isn't completed. So, talking about games that aren't completed or aren't out yet, Fox, mm. what are we going to talk about next? Uh, I think we're going to be talking about games that are coming out in August. Excellent. We've got a few to cover. Um, some games aren't that exciting, so we'll just we'll talk about our thoughts. If it's something cool, we'll brief on about it. Otherwise, we'll just move on to the next one. So, um, first game that's coming out that I'm going to definitely play is Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Guess what? PS4 and PC. What? Guess what? I think I'm going to play this. What, on PC Game I'm, Pass? I think I'm going to get it on... Nah, I, I don't even know if it's on Game Pass. I think I'm going to play my first ever PC game because I've got this new thing that I'm doing on my channel. I'm doing Sunday, every second Sunday, or maybe every Sunday, depending on how well it goes. I'm going to be called playing... called Not Xbox Day. No, it's called Playing With Viewers. And Oh, okay. And this... I want to play with viewers. I've been, I've watched some some gameplay of this. I want to do this. So what I'm going to need is someone to message me on Discord and tell me how to, how do I get a PC game? I don't even know how to. Do that. <laughs> I don't have a Steam uh, account. Uh, 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 I don't know if this is on Steam. I heard it's Windows for PC. Is that different than Steam? I don't know how all that works. Somebody fill me uh, in. I'm going to play this yeah, game with viewers. This is a different store. Yeah. Hopefully next weekend. I want to play this with viewers. So next yeah, look, Sunday. Um, I talked. I talked to her ages ago that battle royales. I still think is still fresh, and there's no battle royale that's caught my interest. And like people kept talking about Fall Guys, Fall Guys, Fall Guys. I'm like, oh, all right. And I saw. It, I didn't realize it was no one told me it was based on like a, like I don't know if you've watched Japanese game shows, Aussie, but it's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. a Japanese game or, or, show or, or American Gladiators, the show. Yeah, yeah. And I was it's like, stuff I was like, like I love that. I love that stuff. And I was like, and I saw it was like there's a battle royale based on that. And, and this and the wacky art style that this got the the funny little uh, characters. I didn't know one say that I'm to in. me. I am in. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. I'm going to play that. And I'll, I'll definitely get the... Pl if it's not too painful, I'll get the platinum for it. <laughs> all, right, um, all right, next uh, next game we've got is Hellbound, which is PC only. Um, if anyone wants to know, it's just a fast-paced FPS. So if you love your classic 90s style um, stuff like Duke Nukem, Doom, um, even that game I played recently, Iron Fury, just like that, just a really fast-paced game. So if you miss those your style where there's no um, stopping to shoot like in Call of Duty, um, that's, that's there for you guys. Cool. All right, next game, uh, a Scully on PS4, Xbox, Switch, PC, August 4th. Um, I'd never even heard of this game. I looked out. I am actually might even give it a try. Uh, basically plays like a bowl that you're exploring. It's like a 3D um, 3D platform, puzzle platformer. You play as a bowl and you can go into like objects and like take control of it. Just looks, just, I don't know. It's hard to describe. It looks fun. 
Interesting. We'll keep an eye out for right. it. Just August 4th, we, you said. Yeah. August 4th. All right. Next one Fast and Furious Crossroads, PS4, Xbox One, PC, August 7th. Uh, it looks a bit half assed, though. So. They did have this. I think they had this big trailer at the Game Awards last year for this one. And they had yeah. uh, one of them cast members from Fast and the Furious. But I haven't heard much about it since. And now it's all of a sudden it's out. Yeah, I, that's not a good sign usually, and uh, I've I've not there's not many let's just say good movie tie-in games or nah. TV show tie-in games. Nah. So I, that just one for me, I, I like the Fast and Furious universe. So that mm. one for me is like a wait and see. Yeah, I, I hope it's okay, but if it's not, well, there you go. Yeah. All right. Uh, next one, Horizon Zero Dawn, which we do lose one PS4 exclusive as of August seventh. So now you can play it on PC. Um, and if you haven't played already, it's a pretty cool game. It I does like look it. amazing. Uh, next one is uh, Inertial Drift. It's a racing game, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC. On August 7th, the only thing special about it, it's a drifting game and you use twin control sticks to control the car. So, be interesting. interesting. Uh, next game, uh, August 11th, which is the big one, Hyperscape, uh, which is the big Ubisoft Battle Royale. So, they're giving it a try. So, they're competing against EA's um, Apex Legends. And then, I guess, uh, who, who makes Fortnite again? I don't even remember. Yeah, Epic. Epic, yeah, so yeah. there you go. So that's their that's their thing. Yeah, I'm curious. It, it to looks, see... I mean, in terms of all the battle royale fans, and again, you and I are not that, but from yeah. everything I've heard from them, that people are happy with this game. So uh... yeah, I'm, and I'm curious to know if uh, if Ubisoft will do what they did with Rainbow Six, where Rainbow Six sucked, or so Rainbow Six Siege sucked, and then they fixed it, and now everyone likes the game. So I'm curious to see if they'll do the same thing. Well, they're pretty Hyperspec good. They're a pretty good well. company in terms of um, updating the game and keeping it fresh and bringing new things to it or improving it if it needs it so because uh, yeah. like you said rainbow six siege is super popular still like yeah. but when it first came out everyone hated it it was like yeah. a 20 gig update and they fixed the game yeah but i think that's because uh, they brought it out too early when it wasn't ready so maybe they've learned from that maybe hyperscape is more sort of in a ready state yeah, yeah. anyway so we'll see if it, we'll see if it goes a chunk anyway uh, next game metamorphosis um ps4 xbox one switch pc august 12th and that first person adventure game where you are a human that becomes a bug. It actually looks pretty cool. Okay. So you, you, I haven't so heard you, of that until I, I saw it on this list. I Me mean, neither. I, I looked, that's why I had to look at this list. I'm like, what are these games? And I'm like, yeah. that actually looks cool. Yeah. I was like, keep, keep an eye on it. It actually looks kind of cool. Okay. Um, next one Total War Saga uh, Troy on PC. So obviously the Battle of Troy in the Greek history. So I'm yeah. forgetting my history now. I'm um, so, I know, I never played Total War games, but I know there's a huge fan base by it. There you go. Yeah, very nation. There you go. There's another one for you. There you go. All right. Uh, Deliver Us the Moon, now come to Switch on August 14th. This is cool. Now, got, this is a cool game. You've got I a guide like on it, don't you? Yeah, I've done a guide on it. Um, really cool um, atmospheric space game. Really, really, I, I liked it. Cool, short, uh, little uh, unique experience. So definitely if you've got a Switch, and you should uh, try that one out for sure. And if you get stuck, uh, next... I've got a guide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, uh, EA Sports uh, UFC 4, PS4, Xbox One, August 14th. I don't really have much to say about it. Nah, good on them. Uh, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator PC, August 18th. I'm curious to see that big DVD edition with all the DVDs. Oh, you want to see someone do an unboxing. It comes with, uh, I think it was 10 discs. That game is on yeah. 10 discs, if you can call it a game. I don't know if it's a game. It's Well, it's a simulator. But you can fly around the whole world. All these different airports are part of it. It's, I mean, if you're into planes, it is a must have. Um, it's not for me. Yeah, it's a, I it's won't a be must trying have, it. Yeah. But if you're into planes and stuff, it's like it's kind of pretty cool that something like that is going to be there for you. Like if you were a, a wannabe pilot or you were training to be a pilot, I reckon this mm, is right. something you know that would be pretty cool. But uh, I'm interested in it just from a purely outside perspective. I want to see what it looks like, but it's not something I'm going to go buy. That's for sure. Yeah. All right, next game we've got is uh, Pathfinder Kingmaker, PS4, Xbox One. There was, uh, so it's a CRPG, which was originally on Steam, now it's on consoles. Looks pretty decent. Mm. Um, apparently the game's a little bit buggy, but oh, I don't know, we'll see. I've definitely heard of that, but I can't remember why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, same thing when I read the list. Uh, Rogue Legacy 2 um, on August 18th for PC. It's not coming to all consoles. Um, I wonder if that's a typo or not, but... Hmm. Um, that was like a very big rogue like that everyone loves so they finally make number two but I haven't seen much on it so we'll see how a it goes a lot of those games sometimes come to PC first um, yeah. and then get ports then but we'll see yeah. um, next one this is, I'm, I really want to play this Battletoads on Xbox One and PC August 20th do you really? Um, is it something you really I, 
I love Battletoads, man. Okay, so what I'm I'm confused about, and I was gonna I'm gonna mention this later in our Game Pass segment, is that it, it's uh, all the release. It just got the release date just the other day, coming to um, yeah Xbox and PC in August twenty. Um, I do believe we saw this at the Xbox Games Showcase or one of yeah, them. Yeah, I did remember I, that. And um, it said on the uh, trailer coming soon to Game Pass, whereas normally everything um, from that show and stuff is meant to release yeah. into Game Pass. So I don't know if the messaging has been mixed up. So uh, I had a question mark on my segment in for the Game Pass, whether or not this comes straight to Game Pass on August 20 or not. Uh, if anyone knows, okay. let me know in chat or let me know um, yeah, in the comments down below. All right. Uh, next one, uh, Grief Helm uh, uh, PC on August 20th. Um, just looks like a 2D uh, indie uh, dueling game. Kind of like it's like very visceral combat where you just walk left to right, slashing people, and it's like I don't know. It looks it looks kind of cool. It looks like the kind of game like if it got good reviews, I actually might give it a crack. Okay. Um, this one, uh, Pastel Blind Karma, which is PC only, August twentieth, 3D adventure puzzle game. Looks like one of those games that you and I would like, but it's not coming to console. So maybe maybe later <laughs> it might come out. Has that vibe? It kind of remind me of Rhyme or something like that. One of those types of like oh, okay, very like, cool sort of little artsy type yeah. game. Yeah, one of those ones. Yep. Um, next one is Aokana for Rhythms Across the Blue. Uh, it's a uh, based on anime. PS4 Switch. August twenty one. It's a visual novel game. I don't play visual novel games, so mm-hmm. I know you don't either. So we'll go next one. Next. Um, new, uh, new Super Lucky's Tale coming to PS4 and Xbox. I don't know why it says Xbox One. I thought it was already on Xbox it's, One. It's like, like a August remaster, 20. like a Game of the Year edition with all the DLCs. Oh, stuff. cool. That's why. Okay, now it's on PS4. So. There's, yeah. I, I've been dying to play it. First so time to PlayStation, play but yeah, and then and then that that edition is getting you know re-released on Xbox. That's all. Yeah. Uh, next one, uh, Golf PGA Golf. Yeah. It's for Xbox One, <laughs> Switch, Stadia, PC, August twenty one. Next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, Descenders PS four, um, uh, August twenty fifth. It has that BMX racing game where you yeah, go this, down the hill, kind yeah, of like a puzzle. This game, one's it's. Oh, I don't know if it's a puzzle. I played a little. I just tried it out because it's on. It was or is on Game Pass, or it was one of the mm. free games with Gold Games. It's it's an, it's already been on Xbox. It's just like yeah, downhill mountain about. biking, and you got to get through all the gates, type of thing, and not crap, yeah. not not crash and score points or something. It, yeah. It's pretty meh. We'll go meh. You don't like? Okay. Yeah. I'm actually going to give it a crack. Oh, um, it's, next one. Maybe it's better now, but it seemed it was quite buggy when I played it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, next one is Insurgency Sandstorm, which is PS4, Xbox One. That's a, uh, August 25th. That's a, um, uh, what's called multiplayer FPS, I guess, come to console. So I wonder if it would be cross play or not. I don't mm. know. Anyway. Um, uh, next one, No Straight Road, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, August 25th. It's a, uh, a music adventure game, so it's got a lot of like big soundtracks. The game's all about music. Um, it looks really cool. I'm gonna probably play that one actually. <laughs> all right, next one. Uh, this one's for you, Ozzy. Street Power Soccer, uh, PlayStation Four, Xbox One, Switch, PC, August twenty fifth. No thanks. Which no, you, not which a team you go for? <laughs> All right. Uh, mm-hmm. Next one, uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered Edition, PS Four and Switch, August twenty seventh. I'm definitely gonna play that because I thought the original game on GameCube was pretty cool. So that's an older old game, game, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. So that was a GameCube game, and um, so it was actually can't play it multiplayer on the GameCube back then, unless if you had the Game Boy Advance cable to link into the GameCube. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which it was just too complicated, and like no one had that. Like I don't in Australia, People no one had a lot of doing trip. that. Probably, yeah. Yeah, and um. So like I actually get to finally play with people because I had to do the game by myself. And what, and is it, it a so JRPG? Like, like, is it what makes it different? Uh, uh, like, so oh, so this one's action. This one's an action RPG. Okay, so because it's not like one of the numbered series, obviously it's a different. No, no, no. It's, just, it's a spin-off game, yeah. but yeah, this was action RPG, very different. I am looking forward um, to this next one. I'm going to play this day one. Okay. So tell me why it looks really awesome. Xbox One and PC. It's the new game from the creators of Life is Strange, and it looks. Oh, yeah, and it's just like episode cool. one because this is going to be an episodic game. But yeah, episode one. Mm. Yeah, and it. I think you just said. I'm curious to know if that's going to come to all consoles. That's what I want to know. Uh, it's not, as far as I know, it's it's part of the uh, Xbox family now. Yeah. Yeah, because they've um, so um, got this. The uh, they got like a partnership with Don't Nod now, uh, Xbox. Oh, cool. But yeah, it looks really cool. Um, in the same, you know, same as the uh, Life is Strange series, sort of similar art style, and it's made by the same company, so. Looking forward to it. Seems like it'll have a, it's really cool story from what I've seen so far. Yeah, yeah. Um, next one is a uh, Captain Tsubasa Rise of the New Champions. It's a soccer game, but based on the Japanese anime. 
about some soccer star. Um, it does not look very good, by the way. Comes out August 28th, PS4, Switch, and PC. Not and then me. we've got... <laughs> Next one, we've got Jump Force, which is a fighting game with all the Shonen Jump characters, the Dragon Ball Z, One Piece, all the... Pretty much all the animes that have over 100,000 episodes with people spending yeah, yeah. 100 for fighting it each other. It didn't get great reviews, um, the original releases. Yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, it's now on Switch, August 28th, so it's there, there for you. Yeah. Um, Another game that me and Ozzy are looking forward to, oh, Madden yeah. NFL 21. Our pigskin throwing. Me and Ozzy, we throw, we, I, I throw, I've thrown a football from, from Adelaide to Melbourne. He's caught it. We threw it back. It's awesome. Yeah, great. Um, oh, oh, hey, hold up. It's just PS5 there. I was there, about to August mention 20. this. I was about to mention oh. this. It's the first game. Um, oh, this was the first ever game. Um, I don't know if we mentioned it a couple of episodes ago. This was the first game ever announced officially yeah. for PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Yeah. And the reason they've said that is because EA came out and said that if you buy a copy now PS4. on PS4, they're going to do the free upgrade um, if you buy if you buy a PS5 or Xbox Series X and upgrade before a certain time. It's not like that full free upgrade no matter what. It was like had conditions. I can't remember the exact conditions, but well, it says August twenty eighth, so maybe there'll be a shadow drop of the d- of, of the console tomorrow. <laughs> oh my god. I don't know how you could keep that a secret. Like, no, I'm sure could. someone would that would have got a sh- would if someone got a shipment of PS5, someone would say something or an Xbox shipment. Yeah. Project Cars uh, 3, PS4, Xbox One, PC, August 28th. Project um, Cars apparently, yeah. like, I mean, again, niche, but has a pretty good following. Yeah. Like, they're pretty good games, yeah. usually. And next one we got is uh, Shing, uh, PS4, Switch, PC, August 28th. Uh, basically, indie beat em up. Looks all right. Um, yeah, August, I don't have much to say about it. I know. I don't um, even know it. Next one, yeah, I'm, next one I'm excited for. Wasteland 3, a uh, strategy RPG based on the Wasteland series, which was the rival to Fallout back in the day, mm. original Fallout 1 and 2, on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, August 28th. Have you played the other two Wastelands, Ozzy? I tried the first one just recently because it got, got released yeah. onto, like a remaster got released on a Game Pass, and it was really old style, clunky. Um, I've actually downloaded number two, haven't tried it yet. And then number three is coming, yeah, to straight to Game Pass as well on August 28th. So uh, I'll definitely try it because I've already pre-downloaded it, and uh, I want to check it out. What they've done with it since the yeah. since number one, like it's cool. Uh, I like the whole setting. So if this game feels a bit more sort of updated, then it might be really cool. So I'm going to try it. All right, next one: Windbound, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, PC, August 28th. Um, just looks like a 3D adventure game. Looks looks kind of fun actually. I might give it a crack if it gets good reviews. And then we've got Descenders, same as that BMX game, on Switch on August 31st, and that's the last of August. All right, that's it, yeah? Okay. That's it. All right. Uh, I guess I'll I'll have to take over for this next bit because uh, this is the the Game Game Pass Pass. section. I'll try and be really quick here, guys, because I know we've already spoken a lot about Xbox and a lot about Game Pass, but this this for Game Pass uh, subscribers, this this is some information that is usually quite helpful, um, especially what's leaving soon. So I might start with that. We did get word just in the last day or two that the next these few games are leaving Game Pass soon. So if you haven't played them yet, you've got Game Pass. You've got about two weeks to play these games. Uh, otherwise you'd have to buy them. One of them was a game we talked about earlier, which is Yoku's Island Express. Uh, as I said earlier, a really cool game that I definitely recommend trying. Um, so get your hands on that and get the uh, pretty simple completion uh, over the next two weeks. Another game that I'm thinking of uh, getting straight to, if I can, is Devil May Cry 5. Um, so that's leaving Game Pass. Uh, another game that I've already played and love i absolutely love this game i actually own it so it doesn't matter for me but kingdom come deliverance if you haven't tried that uh i think you're missing out i think that's a really really cool game and the other two games that are leaving soon are both pc games they are space hulk tactics and where the water tastes like wine i don't know anything about those games they are on pc uh, game pass for pc apparently leaving sorry go you got it now, are you going to try and get the 100% for Devil May Cry no, 5? No, I don't think <laughs> so. If I anyone mean, doesn't know, it is literally the one of the hardest in the in games is to it? get 100% on. I just yeah, thought to is. myself, I, I might put it in the same basket that I'm doing with Yakuza at the moment. And um, I think I, 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 I've, I own Devil May Cry 5. I bought it. I've played the other four. Um, and I keep putting it off because I know it's so big. And if I do do it, I either won't be able to or it'll take me a, a long time. So I put it off. And now I feel like, 
putting it off, I'm missing at least experiencing the story. So I'm thinking- I'll oh, just do it on normal. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking of helped. putting it on normal or easy or whatever and just playing the story and then getting at least that out of it. It's not like yeah. I have to get a platinum, like I'm an Xbox guy, so at least I'll get some gamer score. But I, I feel like I'm missing some games because I don't play them because I'm like, oh, it's going to be a hard completion. I might just put it off and put it off and, and then I never end up playing it. So if I yeah. do play DMC5 before it leaves Game Pass, it'll be just playing it to have fun, which I don't think can be a bad thing. Um, so they're the games leaving Game Pass. Um, what we've got as in the latest additions to Game Pass, we already spoke about Grounded, that hit Game Pass when it released in Xbox Game Preview on July 28th, so just the other day. Uh, the other new games that, if you haven't already heard of them, are Nowhere Profit. Not too much known about this one. I haven't tried it yet. A very interesting art style, though, so check that out on Game Pass. Yakuza Kiwami 2. We just talked about me finishing Kiwami 1, so I'm going to get to Kiwami 2 eventually. And a really, really cool game that I tried on stream just last night is The Tourist. This has got this really, really cool art style. You get to play as one of our good friends, Fox. I don't know if you've seen this, but it stars someone called Super Pretzel Punch. So a big shout out to him. He is in <laughs> this game. You get to play as Super Pretzel Punch. He is a, a tourist yeah. on a tropical island. Um, so really, really cool that we get to play as one of our good friends. If you didn't already know that Super Pretzel Punch, I apologize, but you're in this game. Uh, it's official. You are in this game. Uh, so I'm going to be uh, playing that again tomorrow. And apparently it's a three or four hour completion as well. So really, really cool. I don't know if that is on PlayStation. I'm not sure. I think it's on Switch. Anyway, let me know. Uh, now, also important is games coming soon to Game Pass. We have Microsoft Flight Simulator that we talked about before. That's coming to PC Game Pass on August the 18th. Uh, they do say that it's going to come to console eventually. It's going to come to Xbox, but we don't have a date on that. Uh, now, I did want to bring up Battletoads here in this section yeah. because I'm not sure. It's releasing on the 20th of August. And then on the ad that I saw, or the trailer, it says coming soon. To, it says, you know, the game releases August 20th. And then it says coming soon to Game Pass. So I don't know what that means. If we're getting it a bit later, I'm not sure. I'm interested to find out. Uh, tell me why the game we just spoke about from Don't Nod Studios releases on August 27th straight into Game Pass, like I said before. And then Destiny 2 and all of its um, all of its uh, DLC and stuff, or all of its expansions apparently, all coming to Game Pass. Again, I don't know all of the details on that because I'm not one of these big Destiny players, but uh, I'm sure someone in the chat or the comments could uh, fill us in there. Uh, that, on is, too. that is it. Yeah, let's move on to your segment next, Fox, if you want to. All right, so I guess uh, PS Plus, um, we've got two games. Um, you can actually get one of them right now, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered. Um, that's yeah coming to PS4, and so you can get it right now. You don't have to wait a little bit later. And the other game, as we talked about much earlier, Fall Guys Ultimate Knockdown, coming on August 4th um, for PS Plus, and I'm definitely going to be playing that. It looks awesome. Yeah, I want to play that too. But we, what do you, do you know anything about the completion for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2? Usually people oh, who wait for that yeah, PS Plus um, games, are the only reason they haven't played it yet is because they're not really interested in it unless they can get you know maybe a, a platinum yeah, for it. Or... Yeah, um, not sure about Modern Warfare 2, because I remember the original game had multiplayer travis i don't know what they've done i'm sure they've obviously they took it out yes um, sorry that was a question without notice guys, no no but, i forgot um... to look that up sorry guys um i know you had to do it on veteran mode though mm. remember that veteran mode's not too bad in that game though i remember that well i i think it's really really cool not that that game came i mean good on them for putting call of, a call of duty game on there that, i guess that's great but i really think it's cool that fall guys is going to be free like for playstation like basically anyone that's got a playstation yeah. that's free now like um, it's going to be as well for PC as well. The PC's not... Is that free on PC? Like, that's... It, if it's already oh, a sure. free for PC game, then this is a bit of a... Haha, this game's already free. Here, have it for free. That would be a bit of a kick in the teeth, actually. I'm uh, not too sure, but I, I didn't look into that. But yeah, I, I, I only just thought of it I, now. Yeah, but I think it's cross-play between PS4 and PC. So that's that would be cool if it is cross-play, yeah. Um, and it's not, yeah, it just looks like so much fun. I can't wait. I can't believe I might play my very first PC game ever. I've played a PC game only ever when I went to friends' houses as a kid. On my own PC, I have never played a video game, ever. <laughs> I've never owned a PC video oh, game. Oh, no. For those that don't know, that yeah. might sound ridiculous. I didn't even own a PC for my entire life until I started my YouTube channel. And I had to buy a PC to be able to upload and record videos. That's what I... 
that's my PC background. I'm a noob. Well, I just double checked. Fall Guys is not cross-platform play um, at launch. Okay. But they said we are thinking or trying. Coming soon, maybe. Yeah, coming soon, maybe. Yeah. All right. I talked enough to give give you the time to do that. I'm uh, proud of that. Uh, and while, while we're <laughs> on this you. segment, we've got to talk about the uh, August Games with Gold guys. They just got announced the other day. Portal Knights is the first game coming uh, coming this month. I don't know a lot about this. It's a uh, survival RPG with multiplayer sandbox elements. Uh, it can be played online with up to four players in the same world. And according to True Achievements, it's a 60 to 80 hour completion for all you achievement hunters out there. Uh, coming, And that's coming August 1st to 31st. Uh, Override Mech City Brawl comes to Games with Gold August 16 to September 15. This is a 3D mech brawler which includes a single player campaign and a co-op mode where each player can control part of the mech suit. A 12 to 15 hour completion, so that's a little bit easier uh, for you guys that are interested in the completions. Something that you might not be happy with is the other two games that are announced. They always do two Xbox One games and then they either do two um, 360 or e original Xbox games. So the next two games are actually original Xbox games, and what that means is there's no achievements, but those two games are MX Unleashed and Red Faction 2. So they're both coming this month for Games mm. with Gold. All right, that is all. Did you have anything to add to your PS Plus stuff? I know no, you're no. still looking at no, no, that's, Call of Duty. that's all. Do you want me to look up the? I can look up the Call of Duty while you look up no, the. No, it's. I mean, I think we've gone enough. Uh, through it all. I hope you guys are all happy in the chat and in the comments. Uh, what I like to do now, guys, this is the section. It is time for the army emails. This is where patrons on my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash AussieGamer17 submit emails. I take a look at them and pick one to read out here on the show. Today, I have picked an email from Dragframe, a message from Dragframe. He's a uh, common commenter both on my YouTube and here on Twitch as well, guys. So please uh, make him feel welcome if he's uh, here watching. And he says, hey, Ozzy, I'm enjoying the podcast and all the creative content through your guides also. With achievement or trophy hunting in mind, I find myself going between two or three games at a time, whether it be for certain achievements like multiplayer or new games that come out and often I don't go back to the one I was currently playing. For a while, uh, go back for a while. My question is this, do you have any tips, advice or suggestions for focusing more on one game at a time to help get back, get the backlog down a bit? Thanks in advance and keep up the awesome work. Regards, Drag Frame. I think this is an interesting topic. It comes up a lot. Um, so thank you for the message, Drag Frame. Um, my initial answer... Actually, I'll go to you, Fox, for your thoughts first. Yeah, that's a tough question because it... <laughs> there's like so many different layers and factors to that. Um, sometimes it's a psychological issue. Like I know it sounds a bit strange, but sometimes some people just don't have a desire to finish things. Um like, I, I know so many friends of mine who just can't finish a game. They just play a game, and they just do a bit of it, and they just go to the next game, and next game, and next game. It's like, kind of like a, like a shiny, like a shiny, uh, what's it called? Goldfish syndrome, where they just keep seeing shiny objects, and they just keep moving on. Um, it's like ADD and all that, and you get distracted. Yeah, easy, yeah. And, and I, I mean, I think it happens to most of us, uh, this particular problem. Yeah, yeah. In, in um, different I, um, ways and in I, different amounts, but yeah. I don't have that issue as bad as I used to because, like, if you if you go to my PS3 um, trophies, there's a handful of games which I've half done and haven't gone back since, um, and I and I still want to. Like, there's a few games I love to go back, and I'm still trying to work out a way to stream on stream or when I can fit it in. But anyway, um, I guess drag frame. Um, a couple of things you can limit yourself to a couple, like two or th like two or three games isn't too bad, so don't stress about that. Um, I started adopting a. I stop I broke that rule, but one of my good friends, he used to do the old one big game, two small games, one big game, two small games kind of thing. So he basically preempt like look on the internet, see how long it will take, how hard it's gonna be, and go from that. Because if you play too many big games at once, it just starts to weigh you down. And if you do play three big games at the same time, just good luck. Like you're just gonna get especially if like if it's like a game with like a horrible checklist or something collectibles or whatever whatever else it may be it just it just bogs you down yeah. um i remember i remember one month i finished final fantasy 13 and 13 2 and lightning returns like one after each other and then i didn't touch a jrpg for like a year not you even burnt yourself out. yeah 
For me, I really burnt myself out badly. I mean, I've got a few um, different points of view on this. Like, I before I was making videos or streaming, I was religiously like I would only play one game at a time, and I'd play it till I finished it or I gave up on it, and yeah. that would be it. And then I'd move to the next game. I never touched more than one game at a time. I just felt like my brain couldn't handle that. I feel like um, learning like the controls and then jumping into another game and doing the controls again. I'd always mix things up. I just didn't like it. And so I was like, like stuck like strictly stubbornly just yeah. one game at a time and i found that worked for me i enjoyed that but uh i think if that's not you that's fine and what you're saying drag frame i think my my rule and it's my number one rule on my twitch channel and that is have fun so as long as you're having fun if you are about to play a game and you've got three or four games on the go and you're feeling some sort of anxiety about should i go back and finish this one and i think what would normally be happening is you probably know what game you want to play but you have this anxiety in the back of your head, oh, should I go back and finish this game? I think in that situation, keep in mind, just have fun. Playing these games and doing this and achievement hunting and trophy hunting is supposed to be fun. So do, like, if you've got in your mind, oh, I really want to play this game, but should I go back play that game? Have fun. Do what you think is gonna you're going to enjoy. That's the point of this, I believe. Mm, I, like, the only thing I like to add is, I guess... Um games where i loved it that much that it gripped me that i just finished it then and there like i remember doom 2016 was one of them or even like cuphead right now i didn't even feel i got ghosted to see i didn't even care about it. i just want to play cuphead i don't give a crap about it. i just want to i just want to get those s ranks i just i think like my brain's just so focused on it so and that's big for think me about because you're a massive trophy hunter and all of that yeah like you're big into your, your platinums and stuff so if yeah. you already started on one game you but it wasn't the trophy that made you go back to cuphead it was you wanted to play that game because you love that game oh yeah like that's that's the thing like ask yourself the question are you just feeling guilty because you want that number to go up are you just or maybe you just generally didn't like the game because if the game was that good you would play it anyway you wouldn't even think about it um or you'd or you'd think about it be like oh look this other game came out i do want to play it. it's a top priority in my brain but i'll absolutely go back to the other game once i finish that um but yeah but that's like that's kind of like me. I, I think everyone's got a different way of tackling that same that yeah. same problem. But honestly, drag frame, there's no right or wrong. I was answer. about to like, say. I think the answer is the answer is there's no right or wrong. There's no answer. It is whatever's good. For, and maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe you weren't thinking. Oh, I really want to play this game, but I've got some anxiety. Maybe you're just thinking, what what's fun for you is the numbers for some people, especially you know people watching this or our uh, trophy hunting achievement hunting audience. A lot of people, it is the numbers, and that's what's fun for you. And there's nothing wrong with that either. If that is yeah. the case, I would try and focus on one game at a time. Get that done, put that away, move that out of your brain, out of your backlog, and then go to the next game. Um, whether you're able to do that or not depends on um, your, it. Depends on your motives and what it is that's making you choose different games. Like, do you have to play that brand new game because you want to be part of that conversation when the game comes out? Um, which is also a big factor. Yeah, that's a good. That's a very good point, LZ. Like um, drag fr drag frame. I'll give you um a couple of stories um games where I played it and then years later I finally finished it off. So I've got two really big ones. So one was um Red Dead Redemption, the first game. Um, I did 100% the storyline, and then I started multiplayer. And this is when Red Dead was like starting to die down multiplayer, but there was still some people left. So I was grinding it, and I was like, oh my god, I hate this because I, I hate Rockstar multiplayer. It's just not that fun. Um. And I just gave up. And then maybe what? When did, I think I played 2012. And then when Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, I was like, oh my god, this is my last chance to play multiplayer because no one's going to play it after Red Dead 2 comes out. So I like, literally went on all these forums, got all these people to go get together. Yeah, I, I did it. I just bogged down and did it. And yeah, and I got the platinum for it. Um, that took me a long time. And so that's like six, seven year gap. Another one was um, uh, Final Fantasy XIII. So I bought that game day one when it came out. Um, I got to the last chapter in the game. I just didn't like the game that much. Um, I just didn't care. And then, I don't know, I don't even know what happened. Like, I think seven years later, I was just like, you know what, let's just go finish it. And then I went and finished it and then did all the everything else you have to do in the game. And I got 100% on it. And then I was like, oh, cool, there you go. So if I'm, don't, don't stress, the game's always going to be there. It's not like... It's just going to magically disappear off your console. So, like, yeah, don't don't worry about it. And I, I've been there a few times already. And there's still a handful of PS3 games, as I said earlier, that are half complete that I will actually go back to it. And I know I will. Yeah, there we go. I hope you got something out of that drag frame. 
But the answer is there is no answer. <laughs> yeah, there is no answer. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. No answer. Okay. And it is time for Aussie's betting special. Okay. This is where Fox and I and any guests that we might have on the show talk about a bit of a prediction that we've got coming up and mm-hmm. we uh, all take bets on it and work out who wins at the end of the day. Uh, for example, on the last episode, we had the Xbox Games Showcase event coming up. And what I wanted to know was how many minutes of that show would be devoted to Halo Infinite. I, some reason, for some reason, I guessed 17 minutes. I don't know where I get keep getting that number from. Uh, and Fox said nine minutes and Reptar mm-hmm. jumped in just to just push him out of this I'm glad he did. He said 10 minutes. This was actually close. This was actually close. I nearly got on the board, guys. Spoiler alert, I didn't. The answer or the result was 12 minutes and 19 seconds. I went back and timed it. The uh, opening segment of the show was all about Halo Infinite, and it went for 12 minutes and 19 seconds. And Reptar just pipped me by about half a second. Maybe, Maybe a bit more. But he beat me, just. So Reptar gets on the scoreboard. I am still yet to get on the scoreboard. I'm on zero. Fox, you have four points. Duo has one point. And Reptar now has one point. One day I'm going to get on the scoreboard. It might be with this big epic chance. This is going to be the first chance to get three points in one prediction here, guys. Oh, we're doing three points. Or is it four points? I don't know. I, I thought it was just a point. No, no, there's there's a chance to get bonus points on this one because what I want to know is when we next record the podcast, Fox, and it's only me and you here today, obviously. Yep, yep no one else in my lounge. I was just checking my IKEA lounge. No one else is here, so it's just me and Fox. And what I want to know is when we next record the podcast, will we know the price or the release date of either of the next-gen consoles? But you can get bonus points if your answer is yes and you guess the date and or the price. So yeah, three points. So will it be, will we know either of those things? Yes or no? If it's yes, what are your guesses that they will be? And Uh if you get all of that right, you can get a point for each, I say. And secretly, it's my chance to catch up. However a long shot it might be, at least I'll either catch up or get way further behind. (laughs) And I may or may not have used Number 17 again in my prediction. Bit of a theme. All right. When you're ready, Fox, tell me. All right. So. Wait, wait, uh, wait, 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 wait. Don't hold it up yet. You're going to hold it up. You said when you're ready. I've already got it up. Let me know when you're ready. Okay. Ready, set. Ready, set, go. go. All right. So I go through no, we're not going to know. However, however, if we do, if we do. Yeah. And PS4, Xbox are going to be the same price, four ninety nine. However, the PS5 has got the extra model, the one with the disc drive, and that's going to be fifty dollars more. Um, and then the release date is November twenty seven, which is the Black Friday sales. Oh, hang on, is that around the, the weekend? Right? And it's a weekend as well, so you know. Did you know Did I you purposely write, write this on paper that is see through, and I wrote it this way, but because my T shirt and everything is backwards because of the way I've got my camera set up. I have to hold this up the wrong way. (laughs) But we've gone with the same price, different date, and I've gone yes, you've gone no. God damn it, if we get to the middle, because the next episode is the middle of August, if we get to the middle of August, we still don't have a release date or a price. I mean, they'll both come one in in hand together, so that's why it's only yes or no. Um, Yeah. I'll be very surprised because pre- people are going to get these pre-orders in. People are going to know how much money they're going to save. Come on, guys. Phil Spencer and whoever the guy is at PlayStation, get in a room and get this sorted out, please. Hurry up. I want to know, for one. But you still reckon no. Not that you can change it no. here. No. All right. Well, that is all we have time for today, guys. That is the end of of the Achievement College Podcast, Episode 7. We've made it to 7. Seven's the key number today, Fox. I'm pretty happy that we're doing this. Uh, thank you for all of your help throughout these uh, first seven episodes, mate. Uh, okay, thanks for having me on the show. Really enjoying it. I'm a long way. We've come a long way. Yeah, it's uh, growing. What, it's, uh, what, what, what date was the first episode? I don't have that in front of me. I do not know. 
Um, I think our original plan was to do one a month. We have been doing them fortnightly, though, pretty much all the way through now. Um, and we'll yeah. continue to do that. Uh, so join us in two Sundays from now for the next episode. Uh, live here on Twitch, of course, at uh, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Aussie Gamer underscore 17. I also want to plug you, Fox, uh, or you can do it for yourself, but also go and visit Fox over at twitch.tv forward slash Fox Plays Official. If we're not here okay. recording the podcast, we are, of course, gaming pretty much every day. I know Fox uh, streams every day except Saturday, guys, so go check him out. Uh, come say hello to both of us, and uh, we'll probably have another guest for the next it. episode. So look forward to that. I'm about to stream some more Grounded with viewers. Fox, what are you about to do? I'm going to be playing some carpet against some more S ranks, just for the bragging rights. Awesome. Go and see him kick that game's ass. Uh, anything else you can plug, Fox? Um, yeah, well, obviously, Ozzy just told me about the Twitch channel and also links to my social medias as well. They'll be down below. Um, Instagram and Discord and that, and feel free to join in. Don't forget to get, uh, you can you can actually send me a link to your merch because I noticed uh, your merch has been pushing as oh, well, yes. Fox. So send me that link and I'll yeah. put that in the YouTube video. Guys, check out my merch. This is not the Moi 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 t-shirt. This is the Yum 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 t-shirt. Some brand new merch on the channel. So check out the links for that. Um, yeah, and don't forget to send me that, Fox. Thank you, everybody. Uh, if you're here on Twitch, stick around and we'll have a chat to you after that. But for all you people watching later on YouTube or listening on podcast services around the world, thank you so much. I love you all. Uh, so does Fox. He just won't say it. Uh, goodbye. Platonically like everyone. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> See you guys. Thank you.